Hello, I'm Jim Carlucci, the community editor of the Trenton Downtowner. Behind me is Ellerslie Mansion, which is situated in the city of Trenton-owned Cadwallader Park. Within Ellerslie Mansion is the collection of the Trenton Museum Society, and together that makes up the city of Trenton Museum. In early January, we sat down with Trenton Museum Society board president Bob Cunningham and longtime board member Carolyn Stetson to talk about the status of the Trenton City Museum since the layoff of the City Museum Director. This is another of our ongoing series of interviews co-produced with Kevin Moriarty's Sky Dog Media. Bob and Carolyn, thank you for uh, meeting with us today. Before we get into the actual interview, it would probably be a good idea for the people who don't quite understand, um, give a little history of the, the um, Trenton uh, City Museum here at Ellerslie and the relationship between the city and the Trenton Museum Society. Um, I think it's probably easiest to go back all the way to the beginning, which would have been about 1973 when the Museum Society was first established to collect and conserve the collection. So our primary function has to do with the collection. When the museum opened in 1978, uh, the city provides the building, it provides the heat, the electricity, um, and we had a director. Um, the Museum Society developed so that it provided all of the programming. Up to last year when we lost our director, the city provided for a full-time director, a full-time custodian, uh, several gallery greeters, actually that came from money that uh, was earned by the museum itself, and, um, and an assistant. Uh, but all of those people were laid off and we now are have uh, somebody from City Hall who is here on a daily basis, uh, and there is an intern who's been given no instruction about what she's to do here. So <clears throat> right now we're pretty much coasting until we can renegotiate uh, an agreement with the city that we have had. So with all the changes that have occurred um, before, before that, what, what was Ellerslie's position uh, in the greater Trenton and Mercer arts community over the last couple of years? What's, what's been its niche? Well, I think we've been a major player in that community as far as you know, putting on uh, shows detailing the historic past, the industrial past of Trenton, also a lot of current art, uh, music. Uh, we've really been very, very active. Our membership has gone up. The attendance has gotten much larger than it used to be. And, uh, you know, we, we really were looking to ramp it up even more this year. I mean, we had scheduled uh, what we call the Four Vases exhibit, which is four monumental vases that were uh, produced by the Trenton Potteries for the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Um, three of those are with museums. Uh, one is with the State Museum, another is with the Newark Museum, and a third is with the Brooklyn Museum, which we currently have here on loan, and the fourth one was lost. And luckily in 2009 at an, at an auction in Los Angeles, we were, a, we the Museum Society were able to purchase the fourth, the lost fourth vase and bring it back. So our goal was to get the four vases together for the first time in 106 years or whatever. And uh, unfortunately, you know, with the loss of the director and our inability to raise the funds and things, it's just not going to happen, so um, that's a major blow to us. But uh, that was something we thought that the city could get nationwide, you know, publicity over and, and actually focus on that because those pieces have been called the most important pieces of porcelain ever produced in the United States. So they're very, very important. And uh, we do have the two upstairs that I hope you'll get a chance to look at while you're here. Um, so besides that exhibit, uh, what else has been threatened or damaged by the events of the last few months? What other, what other loss of programming, uh, revenues, what right. I mean? Well, we had an art exhibit that was supposed to open in September, which is put on, was being put on by two of our members. And then we had another exhibit of, of paintings that was coming in later. Uh, but, you know, we can't guarantee, you know, the safety and, and the you know, proper curation of those now. So we really ask people not to bring them in because, uh, you know, we feel we have a great responsibility if we bring things in here and we really don't have the ability to 
protect them as we should. And I think part of that is, you know, we, we've talked to the city recently and, and impressed upon them the need for a director. You know, it's not that oh, every museum has a director and we want one too. It's, it's a case of we really need a director to be able to talk to other directors and bring in the kinds of, of exhibits and things that the city really needs and deserves. Um, the four vases that I had talked about, I think we've really, in the last week, seen uh, an effect of not having a director. The Brooklyn Museum, after, what, 14 years of having that here, has asked to get their vase back. Um, they don't want to leave it here any longer, and uh, it is understandable. It's unfortunate, but it, it is understandable. So. Yeah. But another exhibit that um, the city really is going to feel the lack of is that every year we had the Ellerslie Open, mm -hmm. uh, which was a juried show. We would get as many as 500 pieces of art from about 300 different artists from as far away as Connecticut, Maryland. Um, I think one year even somebody from Virginia entered. It's become a very prestigious show. And the opening for that exhibit draws as many as seven or an, and eight hundred people. And obviously we can't have that exhibit this year with nobody to curate it and oversee it. Uh, it's not that we don't have the talent on our board to do some of this stuff, but we don't have the overall um, ability to manage an undertaking that large and uh, that's the kind of thing that brought tremendous positive press to the city that we've had to not be able to do while we have no director. So you, you've had to cancel exhibits, you're canceling the, the open. Um, you do have a permanent exhibit uh, still on display, has attendance dropped off significantly without the other draws in, in the rotating galleries downstairs? Or? Yes, it has. I mean, we really don't get the kind of people in here that, that we used to. Um, and I think, you know, we, we have a very, very dedicated core of people that support this museum. We always have what we call a holiday boutique here, which is we sell things at the holiday time to raise money. And it's usually a fairly small group. We have a few people here selling things. and. We get a good attendance, but this year it was called the Save Ellerslie Boutique, and I mean, it rivaled the Ellerslie Open. The, the night we opened this show, you couldn't get in this building. You couldn't park within a quarter of a mile of it. People were here, people were buying, and it went on through Saturday and Sunday, and the galleries were just filled both days. It was just an amazing outpouring of support, I think, that we saw, and we saw that the people really appreciate what's going on here. That brings up two questions. One, um, you, you got this great support for your holiday bazaar, um, and obviously it's a response to the, the, the changes. Do you think that's going to be sustainable with a lack of programming, or are people going to kind of, you know, the natural attrition people is kind of like, well? I, I think you're absolutely right. I think that we can probably maintain the interest. <clears throat> for maybe a year, but if if we don't have a new director in here, if we don't have things going again, we're going to lose people because how long would people hang on if nothing's happening? So we are tr still trying to provide some programming, appropriate programming. We're not trying to do musical events because part of the purpose of doing the musical events was be bringing new people into the museum to see the beautiful displays mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the building itself. But uh, we are doing some lectures, um, and we have one coming up. David Bostead is going to do one on uh, Monroe, who was here during the uh, Revolution and during the um, the battle. The battles. He was during the battle. yes. 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 yes, and he, the question is exactly where was he when he was wounded, and he used that wound uh, to help him get elected. Yeah, he, he that carried that patriot. shot with him the rest of his life. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we have, we have <laughs> yeah, and we have other we have others that are uh, you know on the drawing boards that we're going to do because we still feel we that we have a role to play in the city and there are some things that we can do that make sense even in an empty 
even in empty galleries. Well, yeah, go ahead. I mean, in, in February, we're going to be doing what has become our annual antique appraisal day, where people can bring antiques in and we'll give them some idea of what they are and, you know, what they, what importance they may have. So, you know, we're trying to maintain something because you're absolutely right. If people don't come here for a long time, they're just going to drift away and forget that this is here, and and that we really don't want. That and, I, and nobody wants that. I think it's it's something that really needs to be preserved. And you know, as as Carolyn correctly said, we can only keep that momentum going for so long. Um, well, so the, the other question was, and it's perhaps a little sensitive, but there are those who may think that um, the programming the, the um, support of the museum is all within one group, you know, it's, it's kind of a, is it an exclusive club, is it, is it, is it for, I'll say, is it for, if it's for the white audience, is it for the, uh, you know, the upper class, does, does your programming reach out to, to the Trenton community at large? Uh, Certainly our intention is not to be exclusive, we don't want to be. Uh, we encourage, you know, different things. I mean, we've had the Trenton schools pre present art in here. We've had exhibits on Trenton High School in here. Uh, we're going to have a talk about uh, the Lincoln School, the Lincoln school from, Be from uh, Betty Lacey, mm -hmm. you know, coming up. Um, I can understand where people get that perception, but it's, it's through default, not purpose. We really want to open this to everyone. And, you know, we encourage anybody to join our board. We desperately look for qualified people, um, you know, and we certainly don't discriminate in any way, shape, or form as to what we put on. You know, unfortunately, basically, I guess the, the original charge to the museum was that it focused on Trenton's industrial past, and that sort of was basically one group at the time, you know, and. Uh, it's unfortunate that, that it isn't more diverse, but history is what it is, you know, and I think we can try to expand upon that to show, you know, other things going on. And, and we do a lot of collaborative events. We work with uh, any group that's interested in working with us, but mostly we reach out. Um, Bob mentioned the Trenton Public Schools exhibit. Well, this year, because we don't have a director here, we're not trying to have it in this building. But we are, that was an exhibit that we think supports the artistic efforts of the children in all of the Trenton Public Schools. Mm -hmm. So that exists, that exhibit is happening, and we are hanging it at Artworks, where we do have a director um, who can oversee what goes on. Yeah, and in the summer, we do have that Art in the Park program, and we had the, the children in here for a week. Uh, doing different projects, you know, from the immediate area, and I was here for I think half a day, kind of supervising that, and it was it was amazing, you know, the talent and and the commitment of these children. They really uh, were into this and very much enjoyed being here. Will that program? You think that we intend to do that. That was okay. uh, that again is a collaborative program mm -hmm. with Passage Theater, mm -hmm. and it's a two-week program, so it's art and theater that the children learn and. By the end of it, they have a production that they, last year that we performed it at uh, Mill Hill Theater. We'll do, probably do that again this year. Mm -hmm. How's Ellerslie currently being staffed? You touched on that a little bit in your intro, but um, who's, who's in charge? Who do you go to? Well, I mean, the city has assigned um, Colin Cherry here, who's a management assistant with the city, and he's here full time. And, and Colin you know, is a great guy, he's a good interface with the city, he's helped us out a lot in getting, you know, housekeeping issues resolved and things like that, but, you know, he in no way, shape, or form claims to be a director, he's not a museum director. Um, I think we're all very glad that he's here, but, you know, it doesn't replace the director. Um, you know, so, you know, we, uh, I think he's the good liaison and we need someone, even if we had a director, someone needs to be that liaison with the city because they are responsible for mm -hmm. maintenance and housekeeping and all that and, you know, there were things, I guess, that had been let go and, and not, you know, kept up and, you know, he's been really good about, about pushing those things for us and uh, so I think we're, we're glad he's here but, you know, he's not the replacement for a director.
Who within the city administration have you been working with? Um, has it been consistent or has it been a rotating, you know, revolving door of contacts? What's, what's the situation there? It's unclear whom we should even be speaking to at City Hall about anything. There is now, they have designated an issues resolution committee, and that's who we've been talking with. But um, I gave them a list of questions based on our management agreement about, okay, so is there a Department of Recreation, Natural Resources, and Culture? And if there is, who's in charge of it? Um, who's particularly in charge of the culture part. We know that Sonia Wilkins is doing the recreation part, but uh, we have not received answers to those questions yet. So it makes it very difficult to deal with the city in any meaningful way uh, to make progress. But I think we are making progress with the Issues Resolution Committee. Without a professional director on staff, uh how about the care and feeding of the collection? Is it secure? Is it being taken care of? Both what's on display and, and what's in storage? Well, the collection, you know, we have security. We have the building open basically six days a week. Um, you know, we have our collections committee, which, which takes care of getting the collection together, caring for it. And then usually someone from the society is in here pretty much, you know, on a daily basis. So we're trying to keep that going. The one thing we, I think, do miss are the gallery greeters who, you know, were here for a long time and, and did a fantastic job for very, very little money. And I think, you know, they really helped make it because they personalize things for people. When they, as soon as someone walked in, they were here to say, hi, how are you, welcome, and we have this and we have that, and they would take them around and show them the various collections. And, and that, I think, is something we really need to address in the future. But. The collection is secure. Um, you know, we are doing the best we can. Um, we have gotten a grant to have some of our artwork conserved and restored this year. Uh, we have the big uh, piece up there, the Mott plant, the big mm -hmm. drawing, which is kind of crumbling a little bit. So that's going to be restored this year. Um, and we've talked to the city about better climate control because in some of the storage areas, you know, where we have paper and paintings and things like that, really the conditions are not quite what they would be, I mean, for temperature and humidity control. So they're looking into that. So, you know, we're doing the best we can. And I think actually we're doing as well or better probably than we've done in the past. I mean, we're really proactive here, you know, and because we don't have someone else to depend on. But, but we have the collection that we really need to care for. So I think the collection is still in really good hands because we're here to take care of it and we're really active with it. And the city has not shown any indication that they want us to take pieces out or whatever. And, and occasionally they come and they think that they can use the place for storage, but I guess when they actually take a look, they realize there's no room for them to, to put file cabinets or whatever here. So um, we're, we're lucky that they have been respectful of the building in that way. All right. So all things considered, the Museum Society carries on, the collection's secure and, and being taken care of. Um, is there anything you'd like to put across in summary to the public about, about Ellerslie and the Trenton City Museum and, and where we're at and where we hope to be in a year? Well, I think one thing we need to put across is the need for a director. I mean, if the city um, can't provide a director, um, then we are going to need their help to be able to get a director of our own, um, you know, to run this place because, you know, we really have to have that person, as we've said time and time again here. We're in our basically fundraising mode now. and. We initially got some really very good returns on that, and you know, we want to continue to to wrap that up now and and see what we can get. But you know, I mean, we have raised quite a bit of money every year. But if we're going to get a director and we're going to pay for that person, we need a lot more money, and we need sort of a stable mm -hmm. funding source then, or at least something that we can somewhat depend on to maintain that person. We don't want to hire a director this year and then have to get rid of the director it's next year. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, this is a long-term building and a long-term commitment by everyone. 
This has been another of the ongoing series of interviews of Trenton's business, civic, and cultural leaders, co-produced by Community News Service, LLC, and Kevin Moriarty's Skydog Media. I'm Jim Carlucci. Thank you for watching.